What's up guys? I hope you're all doing well. Today I wanted to come to you with a video regarding my opinion on everything that's going on with the whole Shea Moisture situation. I know that it's died down a little bit and a lot of you guys wanted me to speak on this. I have just been having a really crazy three weeks uh, personally with reorganizing life and all of that good stuff. So I'm finally able to kind of get back into making videos and editing videos. I did make a statement on my Instagram, some of you guys saw that. But I did wanna make a video because it is something that is important to me, it's something that's on my mind and something that I'm passionate about and that I care about and I am just used to sharing my feelings. <laughs> so especially on things that I care about. So I don't want this to be any different. Number one, I'm one of the influencers that they chose to be in the campaign, although you guys have not seen the video yet, they haven't released it yet. Um, there were 22 influencers that they chose, obviously from all different backgrounds now, <laughs> we all know that, and with different hair types. So I am involved in the campaign. Obviously I signed a contract, they're using my likeness. I gave my hair hate story. I don't really remember what I said. I'm not gonna ruin the video for you guys, but it was more of like my hair journey story. And so yeah, I am a part of this campaign. So obviously I am going to support my involvement in this campaign. I support my story. And I'm excited to see how they use my footage, edit it, what the video is gonna look like, who else will be in the video with me, yada, 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 especially after everything that's gone down with this situation. I have to uh, say that, yeah, I was shocked too. I mean, you have to call a spade a spade. It was shocking, it was, it was different. It's something that we're not used to, okay? On to the subject of hair hate, which is, um, Definitely a touchy subject, but it's something that is very near and dear to black women. First of all, it just took us so long to figure out and admit that our relationship with our hair was very negative and it's kind of was like a cycle. Every generation is deals with this and it's something that we're trying to work together as a community to overcome and to change our mindset and to change our mindset for the new generation and to make our hair something that we're very proud of. I think most of us right now are very proud of our hair and or are working to get there. I think a lot of us feel that this narrative of bad hair or feeling like you have bad hair was started in the black community. So I feel like that narrative we feel very attached to. Like that's our story. That's something that we're working on. And so to see it with a totally different face is shocking and um, can feel a little bit like a betrayal, like a stealing of our story or allowing somebody on a soapbox that they don't really understand and or appreciate or even relate to, even though they think they relate to it, they have no idea. So yeah, I think that's part of the issue. Not just seeing the brand with a different face, but also seeing our story with a different face. Do you know what I'm saying? So besides the campaign itself, I do wanna talk about the aftermath and something that kind of bothered me about how the frustrations of black women was handled. One thing that I really didn't like to see was that people weren't being respected or that people kind of just didn't want to listen to the outcries of the black female. They were just shooting it down almost automatically without even listening to what people were saying. And I thought that was really unfair. A lot of the media coverage I saw was either, you know, black men around a round table talking about this. And I didn't see any black women being able to talk about what was on their mind. There was one mainstream media clip that I did see where there was a black woman at the round table and she was, you know, kind of starting to get into it a little bit about her opinions of it and then she kind of got cut off and that was the end of it. So one of the things that really kind of frustrated me was that it wasn't mostly black men who had the issue with it. It wasn't white women who had an issue with it. The majority who had the issue were black women. So why were we not seeing black women up there on the stage able to explain why they had the issue. That made me upset because you can't have a discussion about something without involving the people who actually started the discussion. You can't really sit there and share your opinion or like guesstimate why someone feels the way they do without that person actually being present. I would have much rather liked to see black women getting a chance to sit up there and share why they felt outraged or why they didn't feel outraged. Have two black women from different points of views because there's black women who are not outraged about this have black women who from different points of view up there to talk to each other and debate why or why not this was good or bad if you you know if you want to have a real conversation about it so that was one thing that really bothered me i didn't really want to see any more men talking about it and i know the ceo is a man so obviously 
he's going to be involved in this. But I'm just talking about there's just so many men involved in this conversation when they didn't start the conversation. It was just annoying. Hey guys, I just wanted to pop in here real quick. Don't mind my bedroom, but I just wanted to add to that too, like the whole narrative where it's like, oh, black women, why are you always bringing it back to race? And you know, black women just hate white women. And to be quite honest with you, most black women could care less what white women do with their hair, what products they're buying. And I wish that that whole narrative as if we care would be put to rest because honestly, that's not the issue. I think the biggest issue is the whole situation that we are so attached to our story and seeing it in a more, what we felt to be watered down situation. I feel like all that would have been avoided if they would just let black women explain why they felt the way they did. Seeing that black women feel that they did start this conversation and this is their own personal journey that we've been on for like decades, centuries, and it really, at the end of the day, doesn't have anything to do with uh, hating white women or hating anybody who's not black. It's really just protecting our story. And uh, I feel like we didn't get the chance to say that. I know one of the statements that I saw was that, you know, white women, you know, they want hair products too. And white women, they have issues with their hair too. And I don't think anybody's questioning that. I think Again, nobody cares what products that they use for their hair, it's whatever. Everyone has the freedom to buy whatever products they want. And I don't think that anyone's questioning that white women would also be self-conscious about their hair. I think everyone can agree and knows that white women can obviously have self-confidence issues with their hair. Of course, everybody can. That's not a race situation. That's just a human situation. It's just the fact that when, you know, when we're talking about good hair, bad hair, it just it goes so much beyond how our hair looks or the color of the hair. It's literally how we are treated because of our hair. What we were brainwashed to think because of our hair in order to keep us down, it's very much has to do with centuries of mental abuse. And I think that's kind of where the uncomfortableness of seeing a different face on that story comes from. I don't think that black women were trying to belittle what non-blacks go through as much as they were trying to protect their story and not have it compromised by adding in something that doesn't relate to our overall picture and story, which is dealing with the aftermath of slavery and colorism and how that relates to our hair. And that is a huge, huge generational situation <laughs> that is not in any way related to something as simple as like a haircut or a hair color. Um, it goes way deeper than that. And I think that that was the biggest issue. And it's just really unfortunate that again, black women express their frustration with something and it's not looked further into and there's not that sensitivity around it that there should be. And, you know, people are just so quick to attack and think that it's, oh, they're being racist or black women just hate white women, blah, blah, blah. Black women do not hate white women. We don't care either way. We just want to protect our story and our legacy. That's really it. And yeah, the men around the table and all the other non-black people talking about it would know that if they had a black female representative there to present that position. The other thing was that obviously because there wasn't a lot of black women in this conversation, the conversation didn't move forward. I think that one of the um, things that they were saying from Shane Weister's side was that they're really happy that they were able to start the conversation, but the conversation didn't move forward because there were no black women involved. So everyone was kind of just like, oh yeah, I don't see it as a big a big deal. Or, you know, white women have hair hate too, and everyone kind of co-signed that. There's no debate. And I don't really think that's fair because they weren't the ones who started the conversation. They weren't the ones who originally shared their frustration with the video. And so therefore, of course, they're not going to feel any way about it because they, they, don't, they don't care either way. And, and I don't even know if they're in the position to understand. I feel like black women who don't agree with the outrage would have been better because at least they're in a position where they can understand from the black female point of view. And somebody who's just not a black female will not understand, not even a black man will understand what a black female feels or what she goes through. It has to be a black female. And just because you don't understand what somebody feels doesn't mean that it's not right or doesn't mean that it's not valid or that it doesn't deserve to be heard. You deserve to have your feelings expressed and if somebody's going to talk about you, you deserve to be there in order to defend or explain your position. So that's one thing that really bothered me about the aftermath of it. I feel like black women just weren't really given a huge chance to explain their position, why they felt that way. Generally, it was mostly black male, non-black women. 
uh, talking about it or getting to share their opinions about it. And I think the thing to remember for those who aren't very empathetic with other people is that just because you don't understand why a person feels the way they feel doesn't mean that it's wrong. If you want to have a good relationship with somebody, you need to hear them out regardless of whether you agree with what they're saying or not. Just give them the, the chance to speak about it and try to understand it without trying to just quiet them down. I just see this occurring so much and black women are always the first to like stand up for somebody and like we always stand up for the black male, we always stand up for female rights and then when we have an issue we're always just hushed you know we can't talk about it. it's not right we're just overreacting but we're always willing to put ourselves out there for other people why is no one ever willing to put themselves out there for us and at least let us talk about it you know let us share our opinion and our feelings about it so as a black woman that really upset me and the voices that were involved in breaking down the situation i don't really feel like it was broke down so it could have definitely been done better and i guess i'll just close by saying i wish people would just listen more to what people have to say and be more caring about people's feelings because this is a very sensitive subject. Hair to a black woman is a very personal thing. No one wants to feel like something is taken away from them. Even if you don't understand it, even if you are not a part of the group or you just don't understand why somebody would feel that way, the fact that someone feels that way should be enough and you should want to dig deeper into it and allow them the chance to explain why without walking over it. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's my whole opinion. I'm kind of in the middle situation of the situation where I am a part of the campaign and I'm one of the influencers that is sharing their story, but then I'm also a black woman. Like I completely understand the shock value of, of that video and so it's very interesting to see how I guess this will all play out but yeah I look forward to seeing my video my hair story um, and I will be sharing it via my social medias hope that you enjoyed this video let me know your thoughts in the comments below it'll definitely be interesting to see where this goes moving forward it's just very unfortunate all around so anyway i hope you guys are having an awesome day and i will see you in the next one